feel like a full disclosure is necessary because I'm, I'm feeling like a bit of a fraud right now. This video is about to be about eating healthy and I just ate a double Whopper with cheese. So broccoli sprouts. <clears throat> wanted to make this semi-quick video just to talk a little about broccoli sprouts. I got turned on to broccoli sprouts after I watched a Joe Rogan podcast. I know I talk about Joe Rogan podcast all the time, but I listen to it every day, like literally every day. So, But there was a lady on there. Uh, she's been on several times. This lady is so smart that it actually makes my head hurt. I mean, like crazy spouts off stuff that I can't even pronounce smart. Evil genius smart. Can't even understand half of what she says smart. I mean, make you feel really stupid because you can't absorb the information that she's just, if I studied for the next 20 years, I would know, and she just knows it, just rattles it off like a madman. Brilliant, brilliant person, basically. Me and Allison laugh about it all the time. She's just one of those people, she's a scientist, and she's one of those people that is so smart that when she really gets going, your eyes actually cross a little bit. Her name is uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick. Very interesting lady, watch some of Joe Rogan's podcasts uh, sometime with her on it, or uh, I think she's actually got her own YouTube channel where she does stuff. Very detailed information though, so if you do watch one of hers, just get ready to maybe need some Tylenol afterwards. Just, just you know, her field of study is uh, health basically she does a lot of studies on nutrition and nutrition effect on people's health and longevity and, and, and disease prevention and whatnot she was on there recently talking about sulforaphane basically it's a phytochemical that is found in a lot of cruciferous vegetables so things like broccoli cabbage uh, brussels sprouts stuff like that and well I'll read it to you so you can see the kind of brain numbing stuff I'm talking about. It says sulforaphane is a compound with an isiliconate group. And I'm probably going to totally botch some of this because I'm not a scientist. When the enzyme myosinase transforms glucophafen and glucosinate. Today, Junior! Into sulforaphane. Yeah, like, uh, like no, no clue. Basically, sulforaphane is created in cruciferous vegetables when you eat them. You chew up the matter and the plant's response to the damage is to create sulforaphane. If I've got that right. Hope I'm not botching that. I'm pretty certain that's fairly correct. Just so happens that broccoli sprouts are one of the most abundant sources of sulforaphane. It's very concentrated in broccoli sprouts. When they did studies with uh, people with certain types of prostate cancer, the tumor's doubling rate was like reduced by 80% with certain doses of this sulforaphane. So, and there's a lot of other health benefits to it. I won't go into too much detail in this video because I'll just let you go to the, the source for that stuff. So check her out or check out Joe Roman's podcast with her in it. Basic point just to dilute it down a little bit and shorten this up. Eat broccoli sprouts if you can. They're, they're really good for you. You can sprout these in your own house. This is a uh, organic off of Amazon, Handy Pantry USDA organic. I uh, found it on Amazon, it's a 2.5 pound bag, and I think it was it's like 40 bucks. So, I mean, that's a lot of broccoli sprouts. So I started out using this kind of deal. I don't know if you can see that, see that? Vanna White. And there's little trays, you see. And you, there's holes, see little holes? See little holes right there? Little holes, so you put the water in there, because sprouts have to stay wet. So you, you put the seeds in there, in each tray and then you put the water and it runs down the holes and it waters all the trays and it ends up in the bottom down here which you catch the water and then you dump it out problem i ran into is i think the holes were too small i mean i followed the directions exactly but the water never drained out enough i don't think and they stayed too wet so after a few days they got extremely farty smelling 
And I've heard from people that broccoli sprouts do have a little bit of, I mean, sulfurophane is in them and the sulfur, sulfurophane, it makes sense they would have a little bit of a sulfury farty smell. At first I wasn't overly concerned about the sulfur smell, but it kept getting worse. I can't take it anymore! Oh. It got so bad that, I mean, the whole kitchen, the whole kitchen smelled like a big fart. It got so bad that when they were done, I was actually afraid to eat them because the smell was just too pungent in my mind to be normal. Um, so we ended up throwing them out. And I think it was because they just stayed too wet. The other way that I've seen a lot of people do it, and Dr. Rhonda Patrick actually uses this particular method, the mason jar method. Mason jar method, you just buy normal mason jars, wide mouth mason jars. These are one pipe mason jars. And they sell these sprouting lids. So it's just basically a lid for the mason jar that's got just a ton of holes. These did not smell bad at all. There might have been an extremely, extremely light kind of sulfury smell. Extremely light. Barely noticeable. They really smelled more like just green. I know that sounds weird, but if you know what I mean by they just smelled green. They smelled fresh and very good. Just wanted to throw a little information out there before we went into the vid, just so you kind of learn from my mistakes. Um, I would recommend going with the mason jar method over the sprouters. Um, just from what I experienced, you can make your own decisions and try them if you want, but that was my result. I'll link stuff below on where you can get all this stuff on Amazon because I actually bought the mason jars. I was out, of, I didn't have wide mouth mason jars. I only had the normal uh, neck mason jars. So you can get the wide mouth mason jars, the sprouting lids, and the seeds all right on Amazon and Prime if you're a Prime member. Okay, so enough of me yappy yappy yapping. So let's cut to the footage where we actually sprouted these bad boys uh, over the four to six or whatever day span. Okay, see you there. Now, the first phase is putting like a tablespoon or so of seeds in each jar and then putting water in them and letting them soak for four to six hours. That's the first thing you do. You only do that once initially. After that, you just water them and drain them twice a day. So that's where we're at. We're on the initial water. Water. <laughs> water. After, so right now we're on the initial water and soak phase. We'll make this a thing. We'll, we'll check in daily, let you see the progress see how it goes and hopefully they don't turn into fart greens this time that we're afraid to eat because they're supposed to be really healthy so i'd like to eat some but the last ones didn't seem last night was the first day we did them like i said you just basically put them in the jar soak them drain them and then i watered them this morning um, you're supposed to do it once or twice a day so before i go to bed i'm gonna water them one more time and show you guys how to do that or even though it's pretty simple still to show you the process um here i gotta get they sell little stands to put these on because you have to keep them angled like that so they drain you see there's the holes in the bottom the holes you keep them angled like that to keep them draining so that you get the um you don't get them too wet, so they stay, you know, just barely moist. Oh, I hate the word moist. But anyway, that is what they look like after day one, one day of being in there. And I don't know if you can see that at all. And you're starting to see little uh, tail looking things coming out of them. And what I've been doing, not even taking the lids off, there's so many holes in them. Just draining the water out. I've been giving them a good shake and kind of slinging them down using you know, this trickle force to kind of make sure I get as much water out of there as possible. Just propping it back up over there on an angle so it can drain but still get air. And that's one. I got three more to do. That was all she wrote.
you just put water in there, swish it around, get them all good and wet, drain it out real good, stick them back up in their spots. And we have them in our kitchen, kind of behind this. The, there's a window over there, but this bar kind of blocks it because they're not really supposed to be in any direct light. Um, you can create mold and stuff, so you want to kind of keep them inside away from direct light in a cool spot. Um, and that's that. They'll be there till uh, tomorrow morning or tomorrow night. Uh, like I said, do that once or twice a day. So we'll see you guys in 24 hours. It's crazy looking, right? It, uh, so this is day two, I think. You can see the roots like starting to try to grow. And that's something that I read directions on. They said not to mistake. They will get these little like furry looking um, things on them. And those are actually like root hairs. So they said not to get that confused and think that your stuff was molding. Because it's actually like root hairs. They look like fuzzy little roots. Anyway, unlike with the uh, last system, this one, no smell. Yeah, unlike with the last one, this one, doesn't have any smell, they smell good. Um, and I think they're doing just as well, if not better. I'm going to water them like normal, put them to drain, and we'll check back in tomorrow. It is day three, or 72 hours. It's kind of hard to say if it's day three. It depends on if you count the day you started as day one or as day zero. And then you're counting day two as f with day, so it's day one, 24 hours? Or is day one the day you start them and then 24 hours later, actually one day is elapsed, but that's actually day two. Point is we're at now 72 hours into the process. <laughs> so 72 hours or three days, however you wanna look at it. But uh, they're looking really good. They're looking way, way, way better then uh let me get her in the light looking way way better than when i did it the other the other method i am going to do the same deal water drain and reset we'll keep going we'll check back again in one day I'm sitting here trying to have a conversation and I told her it's, very, it's hard for me to take her seriously with the... I don't, I don't it's the problem. It's, it's, <laughs> you know, you know, What's the problem? <laughs> this is totally normal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's normal. Totally normal. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm being, being silly. It's hard to take her seriously. I don't know. guys day four yeah day four so technically probably today or tomorrow they'll be done and we could pull them I think you can let them go a little longer if you want but I think I was gonna probably do four to six five six to five days probably pull them more and looking pretty good this method way better than the other method. They don't smell up the whole kitchen. There's definitely something wrong. I'm glad we didn't eat those last ones because we probably got sick as a dog. These two are the one tablespoon and these two are the two tablespoons. So I think as that, is, as that experiment goes, I think we will go with two tablespoons because I think one tablespoon is going to end up just being about a half a jar. But yeah, so, um, so far, pretty happy. That's the update for today. We'll see you again tomorrow, and I think tomorrow will be the last one, so we'll actually um, pull them out tomorrow and uh, de-haul them. You know, the little seeds, there's a way with you can like float them in water and, and, and skim off the seeds to get the, the hulls from the seeds off of them. So we'll probably do that tomorrow. And yeah, so we'll see you guys tomorrow.
last day, day five. So this is end of day five, and I'm gonna pull them today. I could probably leave them in there another day, but I don't think I'm gonna get much more out of it. Did turn out that the two tablespoons per jar, so if you have the same results I did, two tablespoons per one pint mason jar tends to be, I think, about optimal. And yes, look at this. You know what that is? My wife watches The Bachelor. Hold on. Sorry, I stooped my mouth a little bit. <laughs> Not only if you've watched previous vlogs does she have some of the strangest taste in movies, but some of the worst taste in television. Stop judging me. <laughs> uh, you don't care what I watch on TV. Quit disrespecting your wife. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and try to de-hull these. You don't have to de-hull them or get rid of the seeds, but I'm gonna try. If it's easy enough, I might do it. The process that I heard what you do is you just put them in like a big bowl of cold water and kind of shake them with your hands and the sprouts kind of sink to the bottom and the hulls are supposed to float up and then you can kind of strain the hulls off and then strain them out. and. Uh, do it that way. So we'll see, we're gonna try it. But what I plan on doing is washing them off, dehulling them, bagging them, and then freezing them. Cause you can freeze them for smoothies and stuff. And that's what I plan to do with them. That's how I plan to eat them. Got them laid out on paper towels, fairly thin, so that I can let them dry a little bit. I don't know if that's right or wrong. I haven't seen anybody say anything about it, but it makes sense to me if I'm gonna freeze them. I don't want them super wet when I freeze them because then that will just probably cause more ice crystals and, and freezer damage. So trying to let them dry out just a little bit before I, I freeze them. The de-hulling, so to speak, we saw the video. It somewhat worked. It's a little bit of a pain. Um, it definitely doesn't get all the holes out. I guess if you were extremely meticulous and patient, you could sit there for an hour and get all of them out. I'm not that worried about it. Some people don't even de-hole them. So my thought was just to kind of get as many out as I easily could and then not worry about the rest, which for that it worked fine. I only spent like a couple minutes per jar. All right guys, so that is what we ended up with. About a half of a freezer bag full. Just for a first attempt, I'm not upset with that. So that's what it uh, yields. I'm gonna put that in the freezer, freeze that, and use it in smoothies. All right guys, so that was it. So you saw the turnout. I thought it turned out pretty good. I was pretty pleased with it. It went pretty quick. It did not take very long to do. It's relatively inexpensive uh, and it doesn't take up a lot of room or anything like that. It's super simple. Um, so there it is. It, I suggest you try it. They're really healthy. Uh, some people like to eat them on salads or and stuff like that. My preferred method is just to put them in a smoothie because then you don't taste them and you're getting the benefits. You don't put cheap ass gas and cheap parts in a race car because they want that race car to run good. If you want your body to run good, you'll put the right things in it. So hopefully some of you guys try it and maybe we keep some people from getting cancer. Who knows? Sulfurophane, lots of cool studies. But definitely check out Joe Rogan's uh, podcast with her in it. There's a ton of information about healthy eating and broccoli sprouts and sulfurophane and all that kind of stuff that I did not even come close to getting into. So definitely check that stuff out. Don't forget, I will link all this stuff down below. So if you want to pick any of this stuff up, you can get it easily. And uh, that's it, guys. All right. We'll see you next time. I think that's it. I think I got it all. By the way, let me know what you think about the new lighting. I'm testing a new lens and a new lighting. I feel like I like it. But yeah, it's a different lens and I set up my lighting a little different. Let me know what you think. Do you like it? Yeah? Uh, uh, let me know.